Right. You know, I, I, guess, I guess a lot of you are probably wanting to hear about our trip, and I thank God that he sent Mike with me this year. I traveled halfway around the world, and we wasn't, I wasn't alone. I wasn't alone, but we, we had a tough time getting to the Philippines. We was delayed about five hours altogether due to high winds in Japan. Them people, they windy over. <laughs> they just don't know. You know, we, we stranded in Atlanta, Georgia for about three, three and a half hours before we could take off. Got to Japan, had to circle around before they let us land. And you know, that's a 13-hour flight. How much fuel does them airplanes hold? <laughs> you know, I, I thought about that. But then we was getting ready to land in one of the roughest landings. And I flew, I've been on a plane several times. Probably one of the roughest landings I've ever been on. It was, the, the plane was all over the place and it was shaking and I, and I sat there and I prayed and I said, Lord, you take the wheel. This pilot ain't going to land this plane. He ain't going to do it because it was getting rough. You know, the plane was rough riding and then when we started toward the runway, it was every, it was every which way but the right way. But it just like when it come down and it hit the runway, it smoothed out. You know, God was in control. And then he got us left out of Japan. We were stranded on the runway there for about an hour, hour and a half on a plane before we could take off. And we finally got took off and arrived in Manila. Well, the person that was supposed to meet us, nobody knew where he was at. He was lost somewhere. He was supposed to meet us and we was trying to contact the people to tell them where we was at. We was in one area and he was in another area and it took him about two hours to get to the area where we was at. And then we... Got in a jeepney, and we rode about 14 hours to get to take a nine-hour trip. Right? About 14 hours getting from Manila to Naga. Well, we missed the first meeting that we were supposed to be at. That was supposed to have been at 3 o'clock. We arrived in Naga at 5 o'clock, something like that. We arrived there. They fed about 400 kids and about 150 adults. Back at Mount Isaro, back in towards the mountain. But God knew what he was doing. God knew what he was doing. That, that evening, the, the cell seat of the pastor cell seat, he come and visit us at the hotel. And, and then Sunday morning, got up and we went to live mining. I, we preached there. Brother Mike, he, a uh, wonderful testimony. And God's going to use him in a mighty way. But, we, we spoke there in Lib Manning, and the first service, I believe, there was something like 12 saved in the first service. And I knew through all that, all, all the trouble that we had getting there. And they say, yeah, they're, they're persecuting Christians in the Philippines. They may be, but they're going to have a hard time keeping up with us. They're going to have to run us down and they're going to have to catch us. That's how fast of a schedule you're on over there in the Philippines. Because you don't stay at one place long. We preached in Lib Manin at 11 o'clock and 3 o'clock we were supposed to have been back in Naga. So we traveled to Naga, Lib Manin that morning. We preached, we ate, ate dinner and then we got in a vehicle and we traveled back to Naga. To be there for a 3 o'clock service in Naga. I believe there was nine saved during that service. And then we had a, then we had a service at a motorcycle company. We had services in 15 different classrooms at schools, at a school, at a funeral. I'd never been to a funeral home in the Philippines until now. But I'd met this man seven years ago in Naga, and I'd visited him and his family and shared the gospel with them seven years ago. And this young lady, she was 16 years old and she died of meningitis. And I went to that funeral home just to visit. And I ended up speaking at the funeral home and seen six people saved there at the funeral home. You know, it, it's unreal. When, and it's nothing to do with me. It ain't me. I'm just sharing the one that sent me there. It's not about us. All total, 
All total, somewhere between six and 700 people prayed to receive Christ while we was there. In, in nine days. We, we ended up feeding maybe 600 kids. That the money that people gave and the donations that was given that fed probably 600 kids. And then it also fed 27 street kids that we gathered off of the street and we took them into a restaurant. And I thought it was great. I thought it was wonderful until one of the waitresses right there, she didn't like the way these little kids smelled. They live on the street. They don't have running water. They don't have soap. They don't have places where they can go and make a bath every day. But this woman, she had the nerve and she had the guts to say, I don't like the way they smell. Well, she changed her attitude when we left, before we left. But we fed 27 street kids that was there. But we don't just feed them physically, we feed them spiritually. Because we have an opportunity to share Jesus while we're there. You know, they're persecuting Christians here in the States. Do you know that? They may not be heading us. They may not be taking a spear or anything like that, but they are persecuting the Christians every way that they can turn here in the States. And we have stepped back and we've allowed them to do it. We have got out of the way and we've allowed Satan to take control and really destroy the lives that's going on in this world. Because we as God's people have decided that we're, we're done. I ain't done. I'm not done. I'm not done. I don't care where it's at. I'm going to share Jesus. You know, I explained to the, to the Catholics that was there, and that's what most of this nation is, is Catholic. And I explained to these people, I said, you don't need denominations. You don't need religions. You don't need a certain temple. You don't need a certain church. You need Jesus. And that's it. And you can go tell your parents. You can tell your grandparents or mom. And you can tell ever who you want to tell that I said that. And I said, when they ask why, open up God's Word. Nowhere does it say that you need any of that stuff. Nowhere does it say that there's a certain denomination or a certain religion in God's Word. It says you need Jesus and you need to be born again. It doesn't have other, all that other malarkey that we're living by in this world. It's time for us to get away from that stuff. You know, I... I was blessed with the trip to the Philippines. We will do a, we're going to do a presentation sometime. I don't know exactly when, but we will. We'll put together the pictures that was taken and we'll show them on the, on a projector. And if you have questions about the Philippines or you would like to go, Brother Mike, he's planning on going back. He's planning on selling all that he's got and loading up and going. I ain't that dedicated. <laughs> it's hot over there, people. I admire him. I do. You know, missions, missions is something that's very important. When we take missions to heart, it don't have to be halfway around the world. You know, the Lord says to go. And... And when he says to go, he will lead you where he wants you to go to. You know, this, this trip has been 10 years in the Philippines. I know that I've spoke on, on traveling to the Philippines several years here. That I've traveled there. This was my seventh trip to the Philippines. The first time that I've had someone physically go with me. And I've prayed every year, God send somebody. God send somebody with me. And, and I was... I was put down a lot because people would say, God says you don't go alone. He sends you out by twos. I said, I've opened the door. I beg people. God says you've never alone. He says, I've been with you every trip. In seven trips that I've got recorded in my book, I keep a journal when I travel like that. And in the seven trips, probably... I'm going to say 1,200 people has accepted Christ. So is that not worth it? People, God is moving. 
God is moving. Well, we're gonna we're gonna get more on that trip later, later on. We're gonna we're gonna get into God's word. I can't believe we didn't have scripture earlier from Genesis to Revelation, but no, it kind of kind of surprised me, Jerry. Because you know I'm probably going to be there. You know, there, there's a message that is, there's a message that really touched my heart. And it's been a while back and every one of you is going to remember this right here. And, and the scripture that I'm going to read to start with is in the book of Matthew. In the book of Matthew. <clears throat> the book of Matthew chapter 5. In verse 16. It says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I know that I, I've, I've preached this, these verses right here. I've talked on these verses and, and things, but God just keeps bringing this back. But there was a little child up here one day. There was a little child and he, and he walked right up here. And I remember Woody walking over here and I remember him turning the lights off. And this young child, he said, why would you do that? And, and that, that message, there's a message right there, and it's stuck with my mind for a long time. Ever since he come up here in Jeremiah, Jeremiah, God is moving in his life too. And, and I think about that, and, and when he said, why did you do that? We've got people that's asking us day after day after day, how bright is our light shining? Or is our light really on? Or are we just pretending we have a light that's out there, and we turn it on, and we turn it off, and we turn it on, and we turn it off. When we're comfortable being in the light, then we've got the light shining bright. And when we don't like being in the light, then we want to turn the light down. You know, we, we look at things, and, and the world is looking at this light right here. The world is looking at this life right here. And through the eyes of a child, it was realized. It's not just the adults that's watching us, the grown-ups and the people that's in the churches. But it's everybody, even a small child, realizes when our light is not on. And they realize when this light is not shining. You know, where is our light at? Is it bright as it can be? Or are we turning it down? Because we get dimmer in fact as time goes on. You know, as things happen and things travel, says that ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. When we're really letting our light shine bright, that's when it's turned wide open. That's where the, the darkness can't overcome it. We can't put a bushel over it. We can't hide it under the bed. We can't just put it out whenever we want to. People, when we're, when we're tinkering with that light and we're walking around and we're living a life and we're turning it off and we're turning it on and we're turning it off and we're turning it on, we're not really serving God. Because if we're truly serving God, we're not going to be turning that light off. We're not going to be worrying about who, what everybody else thinks. We're not going to be worrying about what everybody else is looking at. We're going to be worrying about what is God telling us to do. And God is telling us to let our light shine bright. He's, let, he's telling us to turn that light on and let it go. Says, so ye are the light of the world. Not just in one place. Yeah, me and Brother Mike traveled halfway around the globe. If you look on the globe, the Philippines is on the other side. And we traveled halfway around the world. 20 plus hours of flying time that's getting over there. But God says to go to the world. So you're not just the light here in Virginia. You're not the light in Tennessee. You're not just the light here in Morning Star. But he says you're the light of the world. He says let your light shine bright wherever you're at. It's the same gospel, the same message. It don't matter where I'm at. It's the same Jesus that we need to be preaching. It's the same light that we need to be turning on here. It's the same light we need to be turning on when we're out on the streets. When we walk into the grocery store, when we get out on our job, it needs to be the same light that we're letting shine. God don't tell us that there's any other light. He says, ye are the light of the world. And when we become the light of the world is when we allow Jesus Christ to enter in, into our lives. Because it says that he is the light of the world. And we allow him to live through us and we allow him to take control of our lives. Then the world sees that light. And that light is Jesus living through us. We have to decide what we want to do. Do we want our light to be on or do we want our light to be off? How many of you like living in darkness? You know, there's a difference in heaven and hell. Heaven and hell is light and dark. And we look at it. When we have our light turned off, we're showing the world a picture of sin. We show in the world a picture of hell. And when we're in the darkness like this right here, that means that we're separated from God. 
when we're in our darkness and we've got our light turned off, we cannot, we cannot serve God. We cannot be connected with God if we're living in sin and we're living in darkness. If we're not living in sin and we're not living in the darkness, our light would be on. It gets tough sometimes. Believe me, it gets tough. When you travel around and you face some of the things that goes on in this world, everybody faces it. It is, it's getting tough to be a Christian, to be a child of God. But I know one that will carry us through. You know, they, they, they sung a song over there and, and the mountains is getting higher and the river's getting wider. And I need you more today than I did yesterday. People, we need God more today than we did yesterday. We need Him more tomorrow than we do today. We need to be looking to the one that can take control of all things. And we need to let that light shine bright. You know the, the, the hills that we used to cross over back years ago. Now they're getting to be mountains. Now they're getting to be mountains and they're getting harder to climb because they're getting steeper. The rivers that we used to wade across on the rocks. Now they're over our head. And we end up swimming with our head underwater sometimes. We need God more today than we ever did. We need Him to take control today more than He ever did. He says, "Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. People, when we let God, when we let God, Take control and set this light on that hill. Satan cannot defeat us. Victory in Jesus. Satan can't defeat me. Satan will not and he cannot defeat me. And I'm going to tell you why he can't. Because the one that lives in me and lives through me has already defeated him. He's already won the battle. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid if I go to the Philippines and they start persecuting the Christians. I'm not afraid if I'm out here on the street and I share Jesus with somebody and they want to cut me down. I'm not afraid. If they put me in jail, I'm not afraid. I pray about things like this and I know a lot of times we joke about it, but I pray a lot about it. If they put me in jail... What's going to happen? They're going to have to feed me first. And I like to eat. But my prayer is if they put me in jail that I am like Paul and Silas. That I never quit. Take me to the inner part of the jail. I'm not quitting. I want to share Jesus with the world. I want to be this light that they're talking about. If we let Jesus live in us, we can't be hid. It says, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. It says, When we light that candle, we don't hide it. You know, back years ago, before you had electricity, what did you used to light? You had an oil lamp. Some had candles, but you had an oil lamp. And you lit that oil lamp, and when you wanted a brighter light, you turned it up just a little bit. And then when you, then when you wanted to tone the light down, you turned it down. When it was time to go to bed, you turned it off. Right? What are we living on today? Is our lamp full of oil? You know, there's a message in God's Word on that too. Is our lamp full of oil? God is asking us, is our light, how bright is our light shining? Through the eyes of a child, they know whether we bright or whether we dim. And we worry about what our, our peers look at. We worry about what our, our, our grown-ups and our adults are seeing. We worry about what Pastor Woody sees up here in our lives. And even the children... The children are seeing what's going on in our lives. What kind of an example are we setting for our children? What kind of example are we setting for everybody? Because the world is watching. 
The world is watching, not just certain groups of people, but the world is watching what is going on in our lives. And they're watching what's happening. Do we let our light shine bright all the time? Or do we just try to tune it down whenever we want to? When times get tough. In the Philippines, when we traveled over there and, and we were sitting there, and then all of a sudden I get a text message on my phone that says, you got an appointment in 30 minutes. It's time to go. Well, we travel there, and well, we're going to go here before we go back to the hotel. The spur of the moment things. As times come up, how bright is your light? I've got pictures, Brother Mike, he wore out. He was, he was, he was wore out. An experience of a lifetime, though. An experience of a lifetime. How bright is your light? Everyone's looking. Everybody is looking at your light. It says they don't hide it under a bushel, but they set it on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. That way everybody can see that light. That oil lamp, you would set it up and it didn't just shine light just in one direction. It shined light all the way around. And that's the light that God is putting out. That's the light that Jesus, the light of the world, is shining. He's not shining just in one direction. He's shining a light that is all around, that is shining bright in this entire world. He didn't set it in a corner over here to where it just shined out in that direction there. He set it up. And that light was set up on the cross of Calvary. That light was set up and it was spread out just like this. And that light shined in all directions. That blood that was shed on that cross, it saved souls in all directions, all over the world. He is the light of the world. How bright is our light shining? Is it on a candlestick or do we have it hid somewhere? Have we turned it down? People, if we would all, if all of God's people would get to the point to where we leave our light on bright and we don't never turn it down, if we would leave it on bright and we would break the switch off. God didn't enter that light into our bodies and put a switch on it. He entered it in there to stay. We don't have a switch to turn it up and down. If you're turning that light up and down, then I'm going to tell you right now today, you're still lost and you're going to hell. Because that light that God puts in your life, you can't, you don't have control over it. We, God is the one who He turns it up and He leaves it up. He didn't send His Son here to die on the cross and put Him in a tomb and leave Him in the tomb where this world can't see Him. On the third day, He rose from the grave and He's alive today and He's alive forevermore and He's sitting on the right hand of God the Father in heaven and He's making intercession for you and for me. He's still the light of the world. He was the light of the world when He was walking around here on these streets and He's still the light of the world today and He'll always be the light of the world until this world is over. When time ends, when time ends, how bright is our light? How bright is your light? Because I'm going to tell you right now, if your light's on dim today, brother, little Jeremiah's going to notice it. He's going to notice it. A small child is going to notice it. He's going to see that your light ain't bright. Your light's not burning the way it should be. And if your light's not burning the way it should be, you better be getting on your knees before the one who can give you that light. You better be asking the light of the world to enter into your heart and into your life. And let that light shine bright through your life. It's not about the individual. It's not about me. When I do travel, you know, people know me by name. They know me on first name basis, a lot of them. I pray that they know the one that lives in me. I pray that they know Jesus, my Lord and Savior. How bright. Is your light today? Have you hid it? It says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. If you're a child of God and the works that people see is not your works, they're His works. Because He's the one that's living in us. 
You know, in Galatians 2.20, when it says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, there's more to that verse than a lot of people believe. Because that crucified means that you've died. That crucified means that the old life and the old ways have been put to death. That means that it's all gone. But it also means that I'm alive. This body is alive. It ain't iron, but it's the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost that's living through this body that's out in this world today. It's not me anymore. Aaron was the one who was out drinking all the time, that was out running around all the time, that was out fighting all the time and had gangs all the time. Aaron was the one that was out living for Satan and was headed on the road going straight to hell. But he gave me a new life. He gave me a new goal. And he gave me new guidance in my life. I don't want him to see my works. My works is what I used to do. I want them to see His works in my life. I want them to know. I want them to know where God brought me from to where I'm at today. But people, let me tell you something. He's calling us and He's asking us, where, how bright is our light? He's asking us that question today. Every one of us know. About the churches in Revelation. Oh, the jury isn't for you. We went all the way from Matthew. Now we're going to go to Revelation. How's that? I believe. How many of y'all agree with me? Genesis to Revelation is the Word of God. Not Matthew to Revelation. But it's Genesis to Revelation. And I believe God says to open up His Word. And you open up His Word and it's from Genesis to Revelation. How many of you believe that Genesis talks about the Lord Jesus Christ? How many of you believe that Revelations talks about the Lord Jesus Christ? And every book that's in between talks about the Lord Jesus Christ. We can't omit none of it. We can't get rid of none of this book because every bit of it talks about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It talks about the one who gave his life and the one who died for me on the cross of Calvary. You know, he's, he's talking to us today. He is, he, and, and it breaks my heart when I see God calling. And God wants to turn things around. And we've already given up because our government says, nope, can't do it that way no more. Don't tell me I can't do it. If God says I can, I can. This government may not like it and this world may not like it. But if God says I can do it, then I, I better be doing it. But you know, in, in, in Revelations... <coughs> In Revelations chapter 3, it says, And unto the angel of the church of Laodiceans, it says, Write these things, saith, Amen. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. But listen to this. Listen real close what God's saying. He's talking about our light right here. He's talking to the church. Who's the church? This is a church building right here. But every one of you is the church. Every individual, every one of us is the church. He don't weed nobody out and he don't take nothing away from anybody. He says, I know thy works. That thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. He says, I wish. Instead of you trying to live your life with the lights on dim. He says, I wish you'd either turn them up or get it right and get it on. That's what he's telling the church. He's telling each individual person that's sitting here right now. He knows we're not hiding nothing from him. When we try to turn, we try to turn that light down and we think we've got stuff hid, God already knows. God already knows what's going on. We, we're not going to hide it by turning the light down and trying to dim it in this world. The one who are, that it matters to. He already knows. But what's going to happen? Life's not a game. Your light's either on or your light's off. We think. We think a lot of times that we dim it. Yeah, we don't want to stir nothing up with nobody, right? We don't want to make nobody mad or we don't want to hurt nobody's feelings or we don't want to step on nobody's toes. 
I'll be honest with you right now, and this is coming from the heart. I ain't too worried about your toes. I ain't too worried about your shins. I ain't too worried about the things that's going on. If I hurt your feelings, I ain't too worried about them neither. But I'm going to tell you what I am worried about. And that's your soul. I ain't worried about a church. I ain't worried about a denomination, religion. I ain't worried about nothing else. But I am worried about your soul. I worry about is your soul right? Is your soul going to spend eternity in heaven or is it going to spend eternity in hell? Look at your light. Is your light bright? Or is it off? Little Jeremiah, he asked a question. He said, why would you do that? Ask the question today. If you're sitting here and your light's turned off, why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? You know, there's a lot of preachers today that stands in pulpits and preaches from God's Word that is going to split hell wide open. They're going to split hell wide open because they're trying to paint a pretty picture out here in this world to satisfy the people. Because they don't want to offend nobody, don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. I'd rather hurt your feelings today and see you go to heaven as to just turn my back and walk away and see you go to hell. You know, you're only going to hate me for a period of time. Only for a period of time. If you split hell wide open, you're going to hate me for eternity. But, if you split heaven wide open, man, what a celebration it's going to be. But God is talking to us, people. Where is your light? Is it bright or is it dim? If you're sitting here and you're a child of God, you're a child of God, your light cannot be out. It cannot be out. Because if your light is out, that means that Jesus is not there. That means he's not there. So if your light is out today, you have been separated from the glories of God. And the only way that you can get that is when you get on your knees and you ask God to forgive you of your sins and you invite him into your heart. It's not a game. This light switch is not a game. Either your light's on or it's not. He says that he wished. says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. I wish. The Lord's time says, I wish you was either cold or hot. Don't pretend. Don't pretend. Make it real. And God is telling us, he goes on down and says, so then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither hot nor cold. It's not hot, we're not cold, but we're lukewarm. Right? He says, because you're neither hot nor cold, that you're just lukewarm, that you just make them believe and you're just pretending. He says, here's what I'm going to do for you. He said, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. And that's because we're neither hot nor cold. That means we're not serving God. We're serving Satan. We're serving the world. How bright you light. Is your light even on? Or have you got a dimmer switch on it? You don't have a dimmer switch on your life, people. You're either living it or you're not. Your choice to make. You got a question to answer this morning. First off, is your light on or is it off? How bright is your light? You know, I hope the world sees Jesus in me. I do. I hope the world sees Jesus in me. Wherever God sends me. 
wherever he opens the next door. I hope they see Jesus in me. I pray that they see a light that is turned up bright. It's like a floodlight that spreads out all over. How bright is your light today? Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Why'd you do that? That has stuck with me ever since he said that up here that day. And he looked up at Woody serious. He wasn't joking. He wasn't playing a game. He looked up at Woody serious. Why'd you do that? God's asking us today, why have we done it? You know, as a child, we belong to Him. Until we've come to age of accountability and we know right from wrong. We have the light. We have the light. When we come to the age of accountability, there's a lot of times we push that light away. That's because we don't want to live in the light. And God's looking today and He's saying, why'd you do that? Why? Look what I've done for you. I've sent my Son because I love you. To die on the cross because I love you. To be buried because I love you. On the third day He rose because I love you. And today, He's building my mansion. And one day He's calling me home. But until then, it may be today, until then, I don't want to live in darkness. I don't want to live in darkness. We're missing so many blessings. I want to live in the light. And that light is Jesus Christ. I ask you again today, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. How bright is your light today? Is your light burning at all? That's your choice. Your choice is heaven or hell. Your choice is saved or lost. Ain't no in between. You have to decide what you want to do. And when you decide, God's going to tell you to move. Maybe not move away from your home or move to another country or, or anywhere else, but He's going to tell you to get up in the mood and to work for Him and to serve Him. Ye are the light of the world. How bright is your light. Let's pray. Father God, as we come to you today, we do thank you for every blessing you've given us. Lord God, I ask you just to take control. This is your service. This is your church. And Lord God, I thank you for that light of the world. I thank you for Jesus. Now Lord, I pray that you would deal with each one here today. Lord, that you would examine your heart. Lord, that you would let them know how bright their light is. That you'd let them know if their light's even on. But Lord, that you'd take care of them. Lord, I pray if there's one here that's lost today, that you'd save their soul before it's too late. And Lord, I pray for the Christians here today. I pray that you'd touch them. Lord, help us. Help us to get that light shining bright in the darkness in this world. Lord, we love you. We praise you. And we thank you. For it's in Jesus' holy name we pray today. Amen.